For a lot of the world, the word CRISPR has an ER and is a cracker. In the science community, CRISPR doesn't have an E and it stands for Clusters of Regularly Interspersed Short Palindromic Repeats. You've been living under a metamorphic if you haven't heard of CRISPR, but something very recently happened in this field that has the whole scientific community divided. Simply, how CRISPR works in relation to humans is that scientists were able to exploit a bacterial system that was used to cut up invading viruses and actually use it to cut up the human genome. Scientists using the sequence CRISPR along with the production of the protein Cas9 can essentially cut and paste DNA. This is happening right now. It's a huge breakthrough. Essentially, we are living in science fiction, and in theory, it can be used to get rid of genetic diseases, make crop yields amazing, and I don't know, like breed dogs that have rubber teeth so they don't bite your arm. The knowledge of genes and the Human Genome Project is actually relatively new. Genetics is amazing. Your code's unique, therefore you are unique. My code's unique, therefore I am unique. And we are so complex. We think, we move, we make cereal. And that all comes down to our DNA. Also, this DNA is so tightly wound that in each cell, if you stretch the DNA out, it would be two meters long. And if you stretched out all the DNA and all of your cells, it would go around the solar system twice. That's crazy. Thank you, histones. So now we get to the juicy gossip, which is that a study was actually published, a peer-reviewed study, that showed that CRISPR maybe isn't as effective and in fact maybe more dangerous than we once thought. So this group of scientists were actually able to amazingly cure blindness in mice using CRISPR, but then there were thousands of unintended targets that were affected. This caused the authors to claim that there needs to be a lot more care and research done before we ever do human trials with CRISPR. But that's already happened. In China, they've already used CRISPR on humans to modify immune cells to attack lung cancer in 11 patients, and the results will be coming out in about a year. On top of that, America was gonna start human trials in a month. When this paper came out and claimed that, you know, we should not be starting human trials immediately, many other scientists came to the defense of CRISPR. A lot of them pointed out malpractice in the specific study. Again, it was peer-reviewed, and then some even went as far as to say it was the scientific version of fake news. Whether or not this study is accurate, it was published, and it has has done its damage. The stocks for the companies involved with CRISPR have plummeted, and the scientific community's excitement around CRISPR has started to diminish. There's a lot of information on either side of the story here, and it's adding to a long narrative about the use of CRISPR technology. Of course, you want CRISPR to be safe, and also to be in the hands of people who are gonna be using it effectively, morally, and ethically. On the other hand, if it's gonna be used, for example, to increase crop yields in a growing population on this earth that needs more food, or, you know, to cure awful genetic diseases, you start to wonder where and when do we actually start using this on humans, testing on humans so we can progress science more quickly towards something that is positive. I love this story. I love the opinions on this story because it shows you the way that scientific community works with each other in order to challenge each other to effectively grow and evolve what is science. I, like everyone else, I'm really excited about CRISPR's opportunities and what it could mean for the world, but also a little bit scared. And so that's why I'm going to continue to read my science fiction. Look forward to my beautiful beautifully bred dog and my beautifully bred daughter. And then in the meantime, I'm just gonna, you know, continue reading science journals and hope for the best. Okay, bye guys, peace.